Welcome to the He's Got Issues Independent Comics Edition number 34. I'm John Cooney here to preview new independent comics being released October 23rd, 2013, beginning alphabetically with Boom Studios and Aliens vs. Parker number 4 of 4. After a vicious alien onslaught that decimated, read, eaten, the badass marines protecting them, the ragtag SpaceX crew must figure out a way to survive, but an even more terrifying threat than the aliens who thirst for their blood may be lurking in their midst, and even worse, touching their stuff. From comedian Paul Shear and writer Nick Giovanetti comes a sci-fi action comedy for fans of Shaun of the Dead and Aliens. Next, we've got Bravest Warriors number 13. It's a great pair of socks. Bravest Warriors is like throwing a whole thing of Mentos into a two liter of diet soda. You know what will happen, but you still have to do it. Don't fight the urge. The aftermath might be a little messy, but you know you had to blast all the way to the end. We've also got Fanboys vs. Zombies number 19. Four stories of the apocalypse is backed with a blast from the past and a peek at what's to come. Following their escape from San Diego, Rob and Berger hunkered down in Mexico to lick their wounds. But once they rejoined the wrecking crew, whatever happened to the kind-hearted, train-driving Mexicans who helped save their lives? Find out here. And we've got Grace Randolph's Superbia number 12. Final issue, Superbia ends its second volume with this shocking, heartbreaking issue. The battle has been brought to the home front, literally. War rages in the neighborhood as the Meta Legion strives to save Zari from the clutches of Hector Hunt, and one of the housewives makes the ultimate sacrifice. From Dark Horse Comics, we've got Conan of the People of the Black Circle, number one of four. Two of the hottest names in comics, writer Fred Van Lent and artist Ariel Olivetti, reunite for a brutal Conan epic like no other. Assassins, dark magic, and a beautiful noblewoman mean trouble for the Sumerian barbarian, unlike he's ever seen in this full-tilt escapade through the mountains of Afghulistan. Next, we've got Dark Horse Presents number 29. Read the epic and action-packed 13-page final chapter of Neil Adams' Blood. Meet Mindy and her cartoon sidekick in a world of gang warfare and haircuts in Andrew McLean's Snip Snip. Plus a new installment of The Strain, The Fall, Mr. Monster, Alabaster, Trekker, Nexus, Nosferatu Wars, and Poe Story from Richard Corbin. We've also got Kiss Me Satan number 2 of 5. After an attack from a vampire maid, Barnabas Black and the witches flee their hiding spot in a cheap big easy motel. Barnabas says he knows a safe place, and as they cross the historic Garden District Cemetery, zombies erupt from their graves and attack the group. A new hitman arrives who is known as the Bone Wrangler, and his power is control of the undead. Next, we've got Mass Effect Foundation number 4, far away from Earth, on Gargarian Station, or Brain Camp as its students call it, a young Caden Elenko undergoes his biotic training. During an exceptionally grueling lesson, Caden steps in to defend the lovely Rana from a brutal commander Vermu, but his rash actions have tragic consequences. We've also got the massive number 16. In the rugged North Sea, the crew of the capital come across a rogue ship of whalers persistently hunting despite the realities of the crash. When Callum Israel and his crew intervene, they come face to face with centuries of tradition and what is referred to as the old ways. We've also got Mind Management number 16, Matt Kent's latest self-contained issue, delves into the history of the women at the center of the mind management conspiracy. What was the eraser's role in mind management, and why is she intent on bringing it back? Comics mastermind Matt Kent delivers a self-contained story from the world of mind management. And we've got Star Wars Legacy 2 number 8, Anya Solo and Imperial Night Jow's search for Sith leads to Poison Bond Calamari homeworld of Dock, where the ship is boarded by pirates who've taken over the planet's orbiting shipyards. Jow senses the dark side at work, especially when he and Anya are marked for death. From Dynamite Entertainment, we've got Army of Darkness Reanimator One-Shot. Ash is hurled into an American graveyard in the 1920s and meets an intense young doctor named Herbert West. If the name sounds familiar, West's obsessed with reanimating the dead at any cost, but he just can't seem to find corpses that are fresh enough. If the setting isn't, it's H.P. Lovecraft's New England, and its bizarre original short story is the source material. Bonus, also featuring a reprint of Reanimator Number 0. Next, we've got Green Hornet Legacy number 42, final issue. This is it. Every hero, even the dead ones, and every villain, especially the dead ones, come back for the final showdown in Century City. Who will make the ultimate sacrifice for Century City? This is the ending everyone will be talking about. 
Next, we've got Pathfinder number 10. When the Pathfinder adventurers are hired to scare away bandits who've taken over the abandoned outpost prison called Raven's Watch, they get a lot more than they bargained for. It's a trap. The hit comic series based on Pezo's incredible award-winning fantasy world, fiction line, and tabletop RPG continues. Sword and Sorcery fans and gamers alike will enjoy this latest chapter from Pezo Publishing and Dynamite Entertainment. Next, we've got Spider number 15. Richard Wentworth has been brought low, but the Spider must still protect New York. As a terrible new wave of violence sweeps across the city, the Spider faces a terrible new enemy who will stop at nothing as he seeks his twisted revenge. But how far can the Spider go to save an innocent who may be the key to this murder spree? It's Pulp Mayhem, Spider style. We've also got Uncanny number 4. A well-laid plan goes to hell when Weaver smells a rat, but only too late does he realize that he's the bait in the trap, and he's about to learn why specialists always work alone, though sticking together might be the only chance to get out alive. Voskat Vampirella, number 35, She Sells Sanctuary, part 2 of 2. Following a surprise attack by a new enemy, Vampirella makes a shocking decision. Who is Sister Midnight, and why does she want Vampirella dead? How far will our heroine go to defend her vision of a better future? And where will Adam Van Helsing stand in the aftermath? Answers await within. Next, we've got Vampirella Halloween Special 2013. Vampirella once again joins forces with Dracula and Eva in order to confront a doomsday cult intent on releasing one of the Ancient Ones back upon the Earth. The trio, empowered from their previous successes, will confront these evil forces head-on. These three warriors race from threat to threat in order to stop the apocalypse, but will learn that even their immense power may not be enough. Whether they accept it or not, some battles cannot be won. And we've got Vampirella Southern Gothic number 3 of 5. Stranded in the Deep South and severely wounded from a mystical demon's blade, Vampirella must continue her quest to save her former lover's soul, protect an innocent child, and not die in the process. Can Vampirella battle a bloodthirsty horde of rabid demons as her body fails her? It's sweaty vampire noir courtesy of Nate Cosby and Jose Luis. From IDW Publishing, we've got The Crow Curare, number 3 of 3. Detective Joe Salk's obsession with the dead girl culminates in his final tale of violent retribution as secrets are revealed, debts are paid, and lives are forever changed. Next, we've got Doctor Who, number 14, Dead Man's Hand, part 2 of 4. Clara and Calamity Jane have been shot dead by a reanimated Wild Bill Hickok. But how? And does this relate to Thomas Edison's secret research site in the Black Hills? And why doesn't Oscar Wilde care if he dies? Only the doctor knows, and he's not telling. We've also got Fever Ridge, A Tale of MacArthur's Jungle War, number 4 of 8. Eric and Blackie are in a complicit captivity in the camp of their junker-gone native, Baron Anton von Sterland. The inscrutable leader of an ambush crew comprised mainly of ghostly and fierce mudmen of the Sepik Valley. Having made their way into the Huon Peninsula in violation of their own spirits and of local taboos, they're on the hunt for every Japanese soul they can find. Next, we've got Haunted Horror number 7. Listen to what fans are screaming about our full-color reprints of banned 1950s comics. The Dead Walk Again in Haunted Horror, Martin Herkak. Haunted Horror is absolutely disgusting, gory, and very entertaining, Tommy Stenzola. From straight-A student to teen junkie, the stories in this ghoulish gallery made me the man I am today, Ghastly Gilbert Smith. The stories the Comics Code Authority didn't think you could handle, Sean McClellan. We've also got Judge Dread number 12, Into the Cursed Earth, chapter 10 through 12. Roasted Judge on a Spit, serves 6 to 8. Ingredients, 1 Judge, Metal Spit, Kosher Salt. Step 1, Kill the Judge, pick your favorite option, we just like to shoot him in the mouth. Step 2, Pry off Helmet, that big gold bird, boots, gloves, etc. Step 3, Secure Judge to Spit carefully, dead judges are heavy and tend to flop around as the spit turns. Step 4, Light Coals, turn slowly, salting and basting with blood. Pro tip, save it from step number one every half hour. Step five, when the skin bubbles up into these fine little blistery pustules, it's time to eat. Recipe courtesy of Angel Brothers Gang, all rights reserved. Next, we've got Other Dead number two of five. The world's first zombie animal epic continues. President Obama travels to New Orleans to deal with the evacuation of the city as Tommy, Azrael, and Justina fight for their very lives against the undead animal horde. All-star creators Kevin Eastman, Joshua Ortega, and Digger T. Mensch join up with the rising star Quig Ping Mu for the shocking second issue of the year's most talked about new horror series. 
Next, we've got Rocketeer, the Spirit Pulp Friction, number two of four. The most pulptastic crossover of all time continues. What is the TV terror that threatens all of Los Angeles? And how can the Rocketeer and the Spirit hope to combat such a futuristic menace? Plus, it's the PV Dolan team together again at last. We've also got Samurai Jack, number one. Cartoon Network's hit animated series is back at IDW. The legendary samurai known only as Jack is stranded in a strange future ruled by the demonic wizard Aku. His quest to return back to the past has tested him many times, but now the stakes are higher than ever. Can an ancient relic known as the Rope of Eons finally take him home? Writer Jim Zub and artist Andy Soriano begin a new era of samurai adventure. Next we've got Star Trek number 26. The conflict between the Klingon and Romulan empires erupts with Captain Kirk and the crew of the Enterprise trapped in the middle. Don't miss the newest chapter of the ongoing series overseen by Star Trek and Nid Darkness writer-producer Roberta Orsi. We've also got Thunder Agents number 3. The reassembled Thunder Agents battle Iron Maiden to a stalemate in the caverns of Kashmir while a hidden army rises below. But which side will they take? Director Catherine Kane stands trial for her exploitation of the Forbidden Judgment Towers, but can Thunder itself survive the now unleashed power? Next, we've got Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles New Animated Adventures number 4. Everyone's favorite hothead usually packs quite a punch, but after a dangerous foot clan ambush, Raphael will have to rely on his brothers to do the punching. With the clock ticking, will Leo, Mikey, and Don be able to overcome the odds against Shredder's assassins? We've also got Transformers Regeneration 1 number 95, and one shall rise. Yep, there's a new Prime on the block, and the old one isn't gone yet. And just in the nick of time, too, as Cybertron shudders and reels under the dual assault of Bludgeon and his war world in a spinning mad Galvatron. But is the advent of Rodimus Prime a boon for Cybertron, or a more dark domino following in the headlong rush to Universal Armageddon? And we've got Zombie War number 1 of 2. When the Denzian's averse military cemeteries begin to rise from the dead, who will stop them? Over Zombie War's two giant-sized issues, Gina, a tough-as-nails fighter pilot, sets about uncovering what's reanimated these heavily armed monsters, and more importantly, what will stop them. Featuring scripts and layouts by TMNT co-creator Kevin Eastman and art by Eric Talbot of Heavy Metal, this new incarnation will present Zombie War in full color for the first time, courtesy of TMNT colorist Rhonda Pattison. From Image Comics, we've got Bounce number 6. Big secrets revealed this issue. What is the darling scene that's changed him forever? Is there anything worse than the death of a hero? And what does that mean for the Bounce and the twisted world he lives in? Meanwhile, the Vamp makes her big move. Next, we've got Bushido number 4 of 5. Vampires in Feudal Japan. Kichiro is an outsider in feudal Japan, lacking the Japanese blood that would allow him to become a samurai. Kichiro must fulfill his dreams of serving the Shogun in a less traditional manner, by eliminating every foreign supernatural threat that rears its fangs. This Halloween month, treat yourself to an issue of Bushido each Wednesday. All five issues of Top Cow and Heroes and Villains Entertainment latest series will be released in October. We've also got clone number 11. Following the events of last issue, Luke Taylor's life is spun off in a startling new direction. Hounded by a new enemy, can he save himself one clone at a time? Next, we've got Great Pacific number 11, Nation Building Part 5. The road to statehood was already rough for Chasworth and its neo-nation, but tangling with the despotic outlaw Chek Wu regime might prove to be his worst move yet. As the people of New Texas turn to the man who founded their unlikely home, how will Chaz respond? We've also got Pretty Deadly number one. Kelly Sue DeConnick and Emma Rios reunite to bring an all new ongoing series that marries the magic realism of Sandman with the western brutality of Preacher. Death's daughter rides the wind on a horse made of smoke and her face bears the skull marks of her father. Her tale of retribution is as beautifully lush as it is unflinchingly savage. Next we've got Rat Queens number two. Gold Guts and Grog part two. Someone wants to kill the Rat Queens. The girls are seeing red and there's only one thing to do about it. Get really, really drunk. And eventually maybe get to the bottom of who's trying to kill them. Because let's be honest, they already know why. Next we've got Satellite Sam number 4. Tiny details of the late Carlisle White's life start to come into focus the longer his son stays sober and asks questions. The network struggles to survive its war against three radio era behemoths in the FCC. Truth comes out, clothes come off, and Mike finds out just how far down he can go. We've also got Sex Criminals number 2. So who's the boy with the same sexy time time-stopping gifts as Susie? Meet John, who until last night thought he could freeze time with his junk. At long last, not alone, 
What kind of horny hijinks will he and Susie get up to together? What any of us would do if having sex stopped the whole world? We'd do crimes. And we've got Velvet number 1, Ed Brubaker and Steve Epting redefine Captain America with the Winter Soldier saga, and everything they've done so far has been leading to Velvet. When the world's best secret agent is killed, Velvet Templeton, the personal assistant to the director of the agency, is drawn off her desk and back into the field for the first time in nearly 20 years, and is immediately caught in a web of mystery, murder, and high-octane action. Sexy and provocative with a dark twist on the spy genre, this extra-length first issue by two of the industry's best-selling creators will knock you out. From Valiant Entertainment, we've got Harbinger number 17, a prisoner of the Harbinger Wars, unleashed. While Peter and the Renegades deal with the devastating fallout of last summer's blockbuster crossover event, an unforeseen threat to Toyo Harada's empire lies dormant deep within the walls of Harada's own fortified prison facility. The Valiant Universe gets larger as a fan-favorite character from Harbinger Wars makes their triumphant return. Out in trades this week, we've got Doctor Who Omnibus Volume 2 trade paperback. All 16 issues plus the 2010 annual and a fairy tale life are collected in the second Doctor Who Omnibus. Includes the final comic book tales of the 10th Doctor, plus a standalone tale starring the 11th Doctor that's not to be missed. And we've got Star Trek The Next Generation Doctor Who Assimilation Squared, the complete series hardcover. Captain Jean-Luc Picard and the crew of the USS Enterprise have joined forces with the Doctor and his companions to combat an unholy alliance between the Federation's most terrifying enemy and one of the Doctor's greatest antagonists. But once the Cybermen turn on their Borg allies, the Doctor and Picard find themselves at odds over how to proceed against the threat, with the fate of the universe hanging in the balance. Okay, so that's a look at some of the top independent publishers this week, but there's still plenty of other books out as well, so be sure to check out my YouTube channel at He's Got Issues to see both the Marvel and DC videos for this week, as well as my usual roundup of all my favorites for the week, with a little more depth and insight than you get here. And if you like these videos, be sure to let me know by leaving a comment and subscribing. You can also follow He's Got Issues on Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, and Tumblr to see everything I'm reading as I read it. So until next week, I'm John Cooney. And I've got issues.